Hello and welcome to another episode where disease takes a dive and people come to thrive. And today we've got an amazing guest, Dr. Elizabeth Bonet. Now she is a certified licensed hypnotherapist. Those are not easy to come by. It takes a lot of skill to get there. She is also a PhD in psychology. So she brings about 23 or 25 years, I can't remember off the top of my head, years of experience in this field. She's helped thousands of people overcome all kinds of things from IBS, marital issues, sleeping problems, you name it. Uh, She's been on featured on numerous platforms, numerous awards, including Top 100 Moms in Business. Um, She's very experienced. She's even had a a prenatal yoga studio um, that she once had. I mean, she does this all, and I love her outlook on healing from the inside out. In fact, she even has an amazing podcast. It's called Hypnotize Me. Uh, She's in her third season. It gets listened to in over 140 countries, just doing a lot of really cool things. So let's go ahead and listen to what Dr. Elizabeth has to say because she has some amazing things, and I really want to help open up your mind to the possibility of hypnotherapy really changing and transforming your life. You're listening to Happy Healthy Hormones with Dr. Chris. Are you tired of the short-term patch to your health problems? Is avoiding medications and surgeries important to you? If you answered yes, then your prayers have been answered. Dr. Chris has been helping people transform their health for over a decade. He's a world-renowned health expert who specializes in holistic health. He's a professional speaker, chiropractor, and international best-selling author. It's his mission to help you reach your full God-given potential through holistic health and healing. Get ready to be inspired and transformed. Here's your host, Dr. Chris. All right, everyone, and welcome to another episode. We have Dr. Liz Bonet with us today. She is awesome what she does. I really love her approach to holistic health and, and psychology and how she helps people deal with their their inner demons, but also just their health as well. And so, I mean, that's physical, chemical, emotional health. So, Dr. Liz, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, hey, I want to jump right into things today because I think your story is really cool. I've never had a hypnotherapist the PhD, well, hypnotherapist at all, but let alone, you know, a PhD, I feel like you don't really find those everywhere. And so tell us like, what was your story? How did you get into hypnotherapy and and that whole journey? Yeah, it's a good point you make. There's um, the PhD level is, is not as common as either no degree or sometimes a bachelor's or something like that because of how hypnosis training varies across the U.S. and across the world, actually. So originally, I got a PhD in clinical psychology and specialized in children and families. And then I actually burned out. So I took about 10 years off of the field And in that time, was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I also had babies and was raising babies and didn't work for about six years, except that I always had like a side business going, like I am the side business queen. (laughs) Okay. So yeah, yeah. I began teaching yoga during that time and really loved it and loved the meditations we would do at the end and um, just the healing aspects of it. So then... I saw a divorce coming. I decided to go back to psychology and get my license. And through that process, I discovered, okay, I want to become certified in hypnosis now. So it was a couple of years before I got to that point. But I felt like I really just wanted to give this a shot. In Florida, it's quite a long process if you have a license. It actually takes you longer to become certified than if you had no degree at all. Okay, so it's odd. It's an odd yeah. in-between thing. But I took the first training and I fell in love with it. It was just such a wonderful match for me with my yoga background and leading meditations. And I had been a meditator myself for, I don't know, now I'm going on like 25 years or something. So it was a good match for me. And then I began, the more training I had, the more I began to specialize in hypnosis and hypnotherapy. That's awesome. So you've been so you've been a, a PhD in clinical psychology for twenty five years, or the, the well, hypnosis? I graduated. <coughs> excuse me. I graduated in ninety eight with my PhD in clinical psych. So we're in what twenty nineteen when this airs, or twenty twenty when right around there. Yeah. Right? So yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Now, so for for our listeners that don't really understand hypnosis, what is hypnosis and 
does it help people overcome or how does it help people overcome disorders and different health problems? Yeah, it's a great question because sometimes they're like, how does it differ from just meditation? You know, is it an actual different brainwave state or is it the same? All kinds of questions come up like that. So the way I find it most helpful to define hypnosis is that your brain goes through these different wave states when we're going into uh, the cognitive state, which we're in right now, we're talking, walking, doing all that stuff. A more relaxed state is alpha. An even more relaxed state is theta, and that's often light sleep. And then a deeper state is delta, when that's generally deep sleep. And then they have this fifth state they've discovered, which is gamma, which is like flow state, which is really exciting. But there's so far, there's not a whole lot of research on that. What is, can but, you dive in a little bit into that? I'm curious about that. Gamma? Yeah. Oh, I don't know that much about it because there's not a whole lot of research, but they are discovering like that flow state that athletes get in or musicians often or even artists or actually most people can enter the state. They have this type of experience doing some type of activity that's skilled. So generally you're pretty skilled in that area and then your brain moves into this, this gamma wave state, which is then um, it's actually a, a pretty fast wave state, but it's very relaxing, very, um, you know, people get addicted to this state because it feels so good. So are they it's actually, they're not asleep then, they're actually conscious when they're going through that. This gamma in gamma, state. yes. So it's like, so is it also referred to as like the zone? Like when you hear people like, oh, I was in the, the zone. zone. Like, yeah. That's the zone. Yeah. And you hear athletes talk about it all the time, right? They're in the zone. Yeah. Well, I'm not quite sure how they begin to do the brain studies. Probably not when someone's playing basketball, right? But (laughs) certainly maybe when someone's like, I don't know, playing an instrument, they can hook them up. I don't know. So then they begin to discover this state that they, that is the zone. That is the flow state. So in hypnosis though, we're generally between alpha, theta, and delta. Sometimes people do go down to delta. And so the, the theory is that you're forming new neural pathways in the brain, and we know that those are easier to do in alpha, delta, theta, and delta, so those more relaxed brain states. What you're also doing is pruning. So our neurons and dendrites, we, you know, we prune all the time. They really do look like little trees, mm-hmm. and I think it looks sort of like a science fiction world when you look yeah. at actual pictures of them you know it's fascinating yeah, it's crazy when we get to the cellular yeah. level all the stuff that's really going on it's its own universe in exactly there. Yeah. it is it feels like a whole universe in there so we know that they prune when you don't use them or they're not needed and we also know that they grow when you're making neural connections so the more neural connections you're making the stronger that becomes and hypnosis helps put up a stop sign to those old ones so that they prune and it helps grow the new ones That's awesome. You know, that's what we talk about with our own patients and clients is, you know, all the things we do are to help create neuroplasticity, creating new pathways Mm -hmm. and neurons. And the research shows that the more of those you create in your lifetime, the better quality of life you have as you go through life. And so I think that's awesome how that works. That was a really great way of describing that. So, so how does something like that, creating these new pathways and what you're doing with hypnosis help people overcome different disorders and health problems? Because you're like, well, my problem's over here or over there or (laughs) this thing that happened so many years ago, like how does this help with me now? Yes. So we're going in and we're changing those neural pathways, basically. We also know there's a lot of research about hypnosis in terms of the parasympathetic nervous system and helping soothe that system. And I can't tell you Like, I can't really break down the science for you because I don't always understand it myself, honestly. But I do know that, you know, these researchers up in the medical schools do all the research and they're like, okay, we know that it's, let's say, um, it lessens bleeding rates during surgery, right? We know that it extends the life of a breast cancer patient by about 18 to 18 months to two years when someone goes through hypnosis, uh, when they first make that discovery versus someone who doesn't, okay? So we know that it's soothing all these different systems in the body, and it's also creating the new neural pathways. So let's say someone really has a hard time with um, sleep, insomnia. Mm -hmm. It's a very common request I get, and I'm sure in your practice, people ask you about sleep all the time, right? They get desperate. Like, oh my God, I can't sleep, please, if I could sleep. And 
sometimes they want to get off the medication that perhaps a doctor has prescribed. Sometimes they don't want to start it in the first place, but they find they still can't sleep. So what we're doing is saying, okay, let's retrain your emergency response system, basically, your nervous system so that it can relax, so that it can soothe, so that you can drift off into sleep. And let's also work on the cognitive piece of, okay, you know, let's take the suffering off of this experience for you of mm -hmm. I can't sleep. So in my office, it's generally a combined approach. You know, someone doesn't just come in and lay down on the couch and go into hypnosis like yeah. we're talking first we're discovering where are the blocks what do you want to change how did this problem first develop um where is it now where do you want to be like how do you want to feel and then as well as some education around okay most people do wake up at night you know this whole eight hours straight is a myth right mm -hmm. or um, it generally takes most people about 20 minutes to fall asleep, you know, except for my husband, of course, he's like five minutes, right? He's out. <laughs> <That's how laughs> like, right? Right on over well, there. You know, hey, women are more left brain, right? So it's like, it's tougher to calm <laughs> yeah. down and get, get that body exactly. back in that Zen state. I get right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My so wife that's and I are the same way. Are you? <laughs> you can fall right asleep. Yeah. I can fall right asleep and she has to go through a whole process and it's, it's a lot tougher for her for sure. So, yeah. um, well, that's, I love yeah. what you're saying because is you're working with the nervous system, you know, like in, in our philosophy, it's like the nervous system heals all. It's just working with the nervous system to allow the body to heal. So it's not like you have to have an outside in approach where you're cutting or you're displacing or whatever. It's like, no, you're working with the body and the body can heal anything. And I think that's great. And you talk about the researchers, research is great, but at the end of the day, the, the people on the ground doing the things, seeing the results is what really matters, right? Like what you're doing is yes. great. These guys are telling us all these great things. Great. I see it in my practice every day. Um, and that's really what people want. They just want the results at the end of the day. And so I think that's awesome how that it's works. Very true. That's awesome. Yeah, and it is definitely an inside out approach. One of my mentors calls it that she calls it healing from the inside out instead of outside in outside in is, you know, medication and I don't know, surgery and, all, and sometimes that stuff is needed. I'm not saying it's not, you know, if someone breaks a bone, you got to mend that, right? Right. But technically, yeah. it's mending from the inside out. Your body heals from the inside. Well, you I think that's crazy. You have that approach because I feel, you know, a lot of people in in your even field, any kind of psychology, psych, psychiatrist, psychology counsel, like they want to just turn to that pill at the very first thing. Like that's what they want to go to. Okay, let's mm -hmm. let's numb the mind. And you're saying, well, hey, well, you can't really heal if you're numbing the mind. You got to activate that mind. You got to create new pathways and, and those medications just kill off those things. They do. They do. I mean, there's all kinds of research around um, antidepressants and a 30 minute walk out of nature is just as effective. And yeah. people don't want to hear that. Okay. They really don't, but it's, or they'll say, I don't have the 30 minutes to walk in nature. And it's like, I, I get that, you know, that is a lifestyle change, let's say, but it, the side effects of that kind of stuff, you know, that that's a whole nother discussion probably. Well, it's a but really yeah, simple a lot question of really. It's like, okay, would you rather take the time now to prevent a disease or take the time to overcome one? And everyone always, when I ask that question to patients, they always say, well, the time to prevent. And, but then yeah. they don't always want to do that thing. And, but it, like, you're right. It's like, okay, what do you want to do? You want to take the 30 minutes and make that time for yourself now? Or do you want to end up in the nursing home the last 10 years of your life? Right. Right. And I think too, people have their own psychological journeys, their own emotional journeys, mm -hmm. where they come to a place in their life where perhaps they are on all the medication and they're like, enough, you know, enough. I'm so sick of this. And now how do I seek healing? And I think that's legitimate as well. And sometimes that's also a question of self-worth. Like they get to a place mm -hmm. where they feel like I am worth this and I want to work on this. And my life is worth this, my children's life, my, you know, all of that goes on for them. So That's it is huge. a journey. Yeah. They, well, you got to find that big why, because if you don't, like nothing else changes. So what should someone look for in a hypnotherapist and what should they expect to experience? Because I'm sure there's different experiences and people that say they do certain things, but they're really not that effective or not really getting the results or the, the process they should. So what should people look for and experience mm -hmm. in a true session? 
Yeah. Well, when I would look for experience and two, I do have a bias towards someone who is certified in hypnosis and who does hold a license. I think generally they're better trained, but I've also met some fantastic hypnotists who don't hold a license, right? They're just certified in hypnosis. So you really have to talk to them. You have to get a feel for them. If you can look for reviews or recommendations, that's fantastic. I would ask, how long have they been doing hypnosis? I would ask, have they worked with your particular problem? Because often people come to me and I'll say, I'm very honest. I say, I haven't worked with that before. So let me refer you to someone who has, or if they still want to see me because of location or something like that, I say, you know, I do have two mentors that I work with. And so I'm informed around that. And I'm also research informed. So those are a couple of questions to give them an idea. If they're looking for someone licensed, then they can go through in the US, ash.net, A-S-C-H, American Society of Clinical Hypnosis, dot com. Or, and there's also an international one. So if they're looking around the world, they can also look for that. Awesome. And then when they get into it, like when you get into the actual, the, the room with you and and you're going through that process, like what can someone expect? You know, maybe someone's gone to the county mm-hmm. fair and they've seen the hypnotherapist and they make people start, <laughs> yeah. you know, the barking like a dog or whatever. And so some people have that stigma, right? Because I even said that on your website, like, yeah. yeah, people probably would think that, right? So what, mm-hmm. what would they actually experience going through that? Yeah, it's funny. I had a cousin actually who went to one of the shows and he said, oh my God, if if that can make my mom do this and hypnosis is really powerful, right? Versus like some people have the opposite reaction of like, I don't know about this stuff. I don't trust it. So it is really interesting to talk to him. But generally you're coming into an office and you are going to talk to the hypnotherapist. Again, I encourage a conversation on the telephone first to, to get a feel for them, make sure you feel comfortable. And then you're doing some history of, all right, what's going on? What are my goals? And I would say before that first appointment, through the conversation on the phone, you should have an idea of whether you're going to do hypnosis in that first session or not. So some people do do that. Other practitioners don't. They want to get to know you first and get a better idea of that problem and then do hypnosis. Also depends on the length of the session. So you should have an idea about that. But then you're going into a relaxed state, basically. So you may sit up and just lay your head back down. Some people lie down on a couch. But you're going to be comfortable and go through a progressive relaxation process and then into the hypnosis. I would say that's generally what to expect. Obviously, there's variations about how people practice, Mm -hmm. but that would be a good general idea. Absolutely. Now, how long does a session usually last? Does it just depend on the person and what you're uncovering? It does. Yeah, it really does. So if someone's coming in for me, like someone, a gentleman came in, for blood pressure. So every time he'd go to the doctor, his blood pressure would skyrocket and then they would base his medications on that. And he's like, at home, it's fine. I'd like, you know, it's white coat syndrome. So they call it, Mm -hmm. right? You see a white coat and also the blood pressure. conversation yesterday with a patient. Yeah. Yeah. So his first session was an hour and a half and we did the hypnosis. I recorded it for him. I sent him home. I said, listen to the recording. He listened to it two or three times. He had a doctor's appointment like a day or two later and he was totally fine. He canceled the next appointment because he didn't need it. And I was so happy for him. So that is something that's very specific. So that would only take, let's say, an hour and a half session is all it took for him. Um, Possibly another one that's an hour long or something. There are techniques that are way more intensive. I do a very intensive core healing technique. That's multiple hour sessions. So two hours, three hours, that type of thing. So it depends what level you're going to, what level of change. That's awesome. Now I want to, I want to hear like maybe one or two of what you feel is like some of your more miraculous um, stories you've had. I want to share one with, with me, not me personally, but I do have a story. It was actually my grandfather. So the reason I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm such, it's funny. I, I say believer, but you know, it's just science. You know, people say like, Oh, I don't believe in this or, you know, chiropractic or hypnosis. It's like, you don't have to believe in this because you don't understand it. Right. Like this certain things work. There yeah. certain like truths uh, and laws of health, but my grandfather, so this is way before I was ever around, but my, my sister, she was maybe like two or three years old. And my, my grandpa, he had been a smoker for years, like probably like 30, 40 years, something like that at that point, like multiple packs a day. 
And my, my sister, she just learned to talk. And the first thing she basically said to my grandpa was, you grandpa, you stink. And like, she didn't want to be around him. Well, he was, she was the Aww. first grandchild. So that all of a sudden triggered his big why, right? Like he wanted to be around yeah. his granddaughter. So he decided, you know, he, I think he kind of tried to do other things before in the past to quit, but nothing is successful. And someone had told him to go to a hypnotherapist and he went to the hypnotherapist one session, never touched a cigarette again, doesn't even like to be mm-hmm. around people that smoke. And it was like one transform- transformational change, which, you know, changed his yes. life for sure. So uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I've always thought about that. I was like, man, like how powerful is that? It is. And I've definitely had cases like that. People who stopped smoking in one session, that's all it took for them. And not that that's Other the norm, people, but couple. hey, like... That's good. So like, yeah, what's what's about, like one or do you think about? Yeah. So it's, it's actually about 20% of people can stop smoking, stop smoking in one session. And then the, the other 80%, it takes more like three to six sessions. Mm-hmm. So even that, if you think about it, you've been smoking your whole life and you could stop within three weeks. Like that's pretty miraculous. I oh think. yeah. 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 I have people who I often work with entrepreneurs who come in and those are some miraculous changes in terms of feeling like, oh my gosh, I suddenly feel completely different. Like I am finally feel worthy. They've been through years of their, like 20 years of um, CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, or sometimes psychodynamic. They've tried everything and then they feel like, all right, hypnosis is often their last ditch effort, right? Well, I will try hypnosis. And they come in and they feel transformed afterward where they're like, my fiance doesn't even know what I did. And she's like, what kind of changes are these? Like, this is amazing how you feel about yourself and how, what you're able to do now with your business and really stepping into that. So those are pretty miraculous changes. I feel often, um, another one, Yeah, another one is people come in for heartbreak or try to break away from a relationship. And perhaps they've tried like years and years and years. So I've had multiple of these clients where they're like, I can't break away. I know this relationship is awful for me and I can't do it. And we do hypnosis. And again, that's generally a deeper process. So it's not just one session, but it's multiple sessions. But then they feel free. They feel like, okay, I've stayed away. I haven't contacted the person, that type of thing. Another one is um, binge eating. I had a, a binge eater last year. I've had multiple of them, but this case just stuck in my mind where she felt like it just helped her so much. Like she, she stopped binging and she's like, this is a miracle. Like I can't even tell you what kind of therapies I've tried. Yeah. And so that to me, that's going to transform her life from yeah. a health perspective Super and emotional. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a couple of examples. Well, that brings me to my next, my next question, which is what are some common things that you maybe see in your office or that you specialize in specifically? Mm-hmm. So I do specialize in the deeper healing, the core healing is what I call it. So going through and getting rid of those negative self concepts that seem to hang around and, and trigger people and stop people from really living the life they feel like they need to leave or can lead. So they see it. It's like off in the distance, but yeah. they somehow can't get there. And it's like, okay, let's work on those old ones um, and wipe them out and replace them with really good stuff. So mm-hmm. I specialize in that. And then IBS is a common one. So it is more effective than any medication in the market for IBS. That's a common one that I do, the stop smoking. I see insomnia. I love, love, love working with insomnia. And I do approach it from hypnosis and a cognitive behavioral perspective. So that's, that's a true. common one as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it affects so many people. And like people ask all the time, hey, what can I do X, Y, and Z? But if you're not getting sleep, that affects so many areas of your life. You're, from your psychology aspect of it to your physiological aspect, it's that can be the yes. one thing that changes someone's life. I think that's probably one of the most powerful things that changes someone's life is just being able to, to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people feel nuts if you can't sleep, like literally you feel nuts, right? Yeah. And the, and the ability to have some control over that is really important to feel like, okay, I do have the ability to put myself to sleep. My body does know what to do. And our task is just accessing that power. That's so awesome. yeah, it's transformative. Well, how does someone work with you? I mean, you talked about, okay, if someone wants to be at, to a, a hypnotherapist, it's closer to them, but you do virtual 
hypnosis too, I do. correct? Yes, I do. So I can do hypnosis all over the world, all over the U.S., and they can just contact me through my website, drlizhypnosis.com. It's D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com and set up a, a free telephone consult. We talk and, and then we could do sessions. I've done them through the telephone, through Zoom, that type of thing, secure means. Mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome because I think that's so, so key. It's, it's tough to find, I feel, a, a good quality person that you trust in any health field. And so if you can have that, that freedom to see somebody virtually across, you know, the, the yes. United States, the world, uh, to find the best. Cause you know, what I, what I really get disappointed in people and their, and their mindset is, well, Hey, you know, I'm just going to go to what's most convenient or what my insurance might pay for or something like that. I'm like, mm -hmm. Hey, this is, you're talking about your health. You, you can't let your insurance dictate your health. You got to find the best for what's going on for you and, and get that Absolutely. change for sure. So I always yeah. ask this question to all my guests and, and it's always different for everybody, which is what does reaching your full potential mean to you? To me, it's a sense of self-efficacy inside. So feeling like, okay, you have the ability to accomplish what you want to accomplish in life. That's full potential for me. Like, okay, it may not happen right now, but I know yeah. I'm going to get there. I have that internal sense, that internal sense of, um, I'm a good person, I have the abilities, I have the skills, or I know how to make that way, make the path there. Because, you know, we can't all do everything, right? Like, yeah. I gave it programming years ago. <laughs> so now I hire someone. But it's like the yeah. sense of self-efficacy is, okay, I have someone that I know I can reach out to to solve that problem, and I have the ability to ask for that kind of help. So that sense. That's awesome. What do you think there's like, if until someone can actually get, appointment scheduled with you or someone like you, what's like one thing they could do in their life that could just help them lead towards that direction? I would say there's all kinds of free resources on the internet. I mean, we have so much, right, that can help us for free. And they can go to my website if they join the newsletter, they can download. I have three free hypnosis files for them that they can download and use and I mean, I'm talking awesome. like five minutes from now, they could get it, right? That's awesome. I yeah. also recommend Insight Timer. So it's a wonderful meditation app and they have courses on there. I listened to one this morning on intrusive thoughts just to check it out. It's wonderful. So there's all kinds of resources. I would say just get started with one thing in your life, one change. Like I'm just going to listen to this one file. That's it today. And then tomorrow I'll make one change. Maybe listen to the file again but just do one step towards your health. I love it. I love it. So, Hey, I appreciate you. I know we're out of time. I think we could talk a lot more about these things, Dr. Liz. So maybe we'll have to have you on again in a future date, talk about some more things and aspects of this. So, Hey guys, make sure you get Dr. Liz's information. It's drlizhypnosis.com. Get those free resources and we appreciate you and we'll see you soon, Dr. Liz. It was my pleasure. Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please help more people in reaching their fullest potential and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to newedgewellness.com.